The latest Boeing Starliner mission is probably the most talked about space mission of recent times, but not for good reasons. What was supposed to be a routine test flight turned into a drawn-out problematic mission filled with delays, malfunctions, and growing public concern. And whether you agree or not, the biggest victims of this troubled mission weren't Boeing engineers or NASA's public image. It was the two astronauts on board. The Boeing Starliner capsule launched on June 5, 2024, as part of NASA's commercial crew program. At first, things seemed to be going well. The launch was smooth. The capsule reached orbit. They docked with the International Space Station. But that's where the problem started. Soon after docking, multiple thrusters failed. Five, to be exact. Then, helium leaks began showing up. Engineers on the ground scrambled to diagnose the problems. What was supposed to be a quick, short mission turned into a multi-week delay. The astronauts were essentially stranded in space, living aboard the ISS while NASA and Boeing tried to figure out if it was even safe to bring them home. And if that wasn't bad enough, they weren't even getting paid for the extra time. Yes, you heard that right. Reports confirmed that the astronauts' contracts only covered the original planned mission time. So, all that extra time they spent up there due to Boeing's technical failures? That was unpaid over time in space. Imagine going to space on a faulty vehicle, risking your life, getting stranded because someone couldn't fix a valve on time, and then finding out you're not getting paid for it. That's not just frustrating, that's a nightmare. If this happened in any other job, someone would be getting sued. If this happened in a hospital, a construction site, or even a car factory, lawyers would be crawling all over it. People would be fired, heads would roll. But this is NASA and Boeing, and where somehow the rules seem different, they call it a learning experience. A test, a milestone. But to the rest of us, it just looks like a disaster dressed up as progress. And just when you think these astronauts would come back furious, demanding answers, warning others not to fly this death trap again, they shocked everyone. At the post-mission press conference, when asked if they'd be willing to fly on Starliner again, both Wilmore and Williams confidently said, yes. What? After all that? The thruster failures, the leaks, the delays, the unpaid overtime. They're still saying they'd do it again? That's like crashing in a prototype car, barely walking away from it, and then telling the manufacturer, yeah, I'd love to take another ride in that. It sounds insane to the average person. But there's more to this story. Let's get something straight. Butch Wilmore and Sunita Suni Williams aren't just any astronauts. These aren't rookie flyers who got lucky. These are two of the most experienced, skilled, and respected astronauts on Earth. In fact, I'd go as far as to say they are the most experienced living astronauts when it comes to operating different types of spacecraft. And that makes their recent words about Boeing's troubled Starliner program even more surprising and puzzling. Butch Wilmore is a retired U.S. Navy captain and a veteran test pilot. He's been flying high-performance aircraft for decades and has logged thousands of hours in over 20 types of planes. He first flew to space in 2009 aboard the space shuttle Atlantis and later returned in 2014 on a Soyuz rocket, spending nearly six months aboard the International Space Station. He has a master's degree in electrical engineering and was handpicked by NASA for some of its most technical and demanding missions. Sunita Williams is equally legendary. She holds the record for one of the longest space flights by a female astronaut, having spent 322 days in space across multiple missions. Like Will Moore, she flew on the space shuttle, then took a ride on a Soyuz capsule, and now, with this mission, has added both Boeing's Starliner and SpaceX's Crew Dragon to her resume. That makes them the only two astronauts in history to fly four different orbital spacecraft, the Space Shuttle, Soyuz, Starliner, and now Crew Dragon. Let that sink in for a second. No other astronaut alive today, not even the Apollo veterans, not even the new Artemis generation, has that kind of hands-on experience with so many different spacecraft systems. They've flown Russian analog systems, American shuttle cockpits filled with hundreds of switches and now fully automated 21st century capsules. These are true test pilots trained to analyze spacecraft not just from a passenger perspective, but from a command and control standpoint. 
That's why when they talk about a spacecraft, people listen. So when they publicly say they'd fly Starliner again, it raises some eyebrows. Let's not forget the fact that Starliner is the only crewed spacecraft in recent history that required emergency workarounds mid-flight. Had five of its 28 reaction control thrusters fail, suffered from helium leaks, and left the crew stuck on the ISS longer than planned, all on its very first crewed test flight. And yet, Wilmore said he'd fly it in a heartbeat. Williams agreed without hesitation. Why? Part of it seems to come from their belief in the engineering capability of Boeing, or more specifically, the individual engineers they've worked with directly. In interviews, they've mentioned how committed both Boeing and NASA are to fixing the problems. There's a sense of loyalty and trust built over years of collaboration. And from a test pilot's mindset, every problem is an opportunity to improve the machine, not a reason to walk away. Wilmore also made a point of highlighting something that Starliner offers and Crew Dragon doesn't, manual control. Unlike SpaceX's Crew Dragon, which is largely autonomous and designed to fly itself, Starliner gives astronauts full manual override capability. That means at any point in the flight, the crew can take over and fly the spacecraft just like a pilot would fly a plane. For someone like Wilmore, who has spent decades flying jets and test vehicles, that control is not just a feature, in it's a comfort. He even joked that the Starliner is so maneuverable he could do a barrel roll over the ISS, though he obviously wouldn't. The point he was making was that Starliner responds like a pilot's machine. It feels like it's under the crew's command, not just a smart box taking them for a ride. But here's where the contradiction starts to show. Because the last spacecraft they flew, Crew Dragon, might be hands-off in design, but it actually worked. Perfectly. Dragon not only has a flawless mission record with over 10 crewed flights, but it has become the gold standard for safety and performance in commercial spaceflight. Every system is redundant. The launch abort system is built into the capsule itself. The interface is modern, clear, and astronaut-friendly. There are no complex control panels filled with switches, just three intuitive touchscreens. As Williams herself noted, Dragon tells you what it's doing, which makes it incredibly easy to operate even during tense moments. Let's not forget that. This might very well be their last mission. They've been flying for decades. They've done spacewalks, long-duration stays, and now they've flown almost every spacecraft in orbit. And when you've spent your whole life piloting aircraft, flipping switches, and trusting your instincts, you don't just want to be a passenger. You want to fly the ship yourself. And Starliner gives them that. Ever tried showing your parents how to use a smart TV or a smartphone? There's a voice assistant. There's a remote with three buttons. Everything is streamlined. But they'll still say, no, I just want my old remote with the number pad. Why? Because they know where everything is. They know how it works, even if it takes longer or is more complicated. It's what they trust. That's where Butch and Sunni are. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.